project I've been wanting to work on lately is some sort of nano build. I didn't really know what I wanted to work on until I came across these two scapes by other artists, and it inspired me to make something similar. So my plan is to take a 3 gallon rimless aquarium and add a sort of sloped boulder formation to it. I can then take spider wood and weave it around the rock, making it look as though a tree is rooted around it. I want to give it my own twist though, so I'll make the tree sticking out of the water and add a little bit of riparian plant growth. Before we begin, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. As mentioned earlier for this project, I'll be using a 3 gallon Aquion rimless aquarium. Normally I would de-rim my own aquarium, but I wasn't able to find one that were the dimensions that I wanted, and I got this one pretty cheap. Anyway, the first order of business is the hardscape, which I'll be using some Seriu stone to create the boulder, and spiderwood to create the tree trunk. In order to evenly distribute the weight of the stones, I'll add a piece of egg crate to the bottom of the aquarium. I then began scaping, using the largest elements first. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, my plan for this was to create a sort of sloped rock formation with a tree trunk weaving around it. Of course I had to pick one of the hardest scapes to make with the materials that I had, so I started by placing in all the stones and occasionally checking the fit of the wood. On a side note, can we acknowledge this piece of wood that I found? It's incredible and it's almost like it was made for this build. Good job, me. Ironically, as perfect as this piece is, I still had a hard time working with it. Still, I did my best to create escape that fit to the vision that I had in mind. As I'm sure you can see from the clips of how many times I changed this around, it wasn't easy. Still, I kept working and tried my best. After I kid you not about two hours of continuous scaping, I finally had a base scape in place. It doesn't really look like much now, but it gives me the perfect building blocks to create the look that I wanted. Adding smaller stones to fill in the gaps between the wood and other rocks will help fill in the scape and make it feel more solid. After filling in all the spaces, I used a little bit of cotton ball fluff as well as super glue to secure some of the wood pieces to the rocks. The reason I'm doing this is not only to create a stable scape that I won't mess up when working around it, but also because the wood I'm using isn't waterlogged and if I fill up the tank now, the wood will float. I also added a bit of crushed up Seriu stone on top of it to cover it up. I then repeated this process pretty much anywhere where the branches touch the rocks. Also it's important to use cyan or acrylate superglue as it's aquarium safe. Anyway, after letting the superglue dry, I started to pour in a layer of aqua soil sloped up towards the back. This won't be the primary substrate, but I need something that the plants can grow in. Once I had the desired amount poured in, I used an aquascaping tool to slope it up and flatten it out a bit. Then towards the front where no plants will be growing, I added some aquarium sand. I added a decent amount and then dramatically sloped it up towards the scape. Doing this helped create an embankment look that I felt worked well for the idea that I had. I also used a small brush to brush off any undesirable pieces of sand from the scape. I then proceeded to add some even smaller stones to help fill in more space. I also wanted to enhance that tree trunk rooting around a boulder look, so I added a few smaller pieces of spider wood that I super glued into place. While adding these, I tried my best to pick pieces that formed around the rocks. Doing this gave everything a natural flow. Then I started to add some more smaller stones to the edges of the scape to help bring a sense of scale. To further enhance the sense of scale, I added some crushed up Seriu stone around the edges of the scape as well. Unfortunately, the main piece of wood has a cutoff at the top, so I'll add this other piece of spider wood to help it feel more natural and complete. Like the other pieces, I secured this with super glue. After allowing this piece to dry in a total of 4 hours of scaping, I finally had something I was happy with. Honestly, in my opinion, this is one of my best scapes, if not my best scapes to date. It's a perfect representation of the vision that I had at the beginning of the video, and I couldn't be more happy with it. As usual though, it'll look much better with the plants. I'm using mostly epiphytic plants such as Anubius non petite, java ferns, various crypts, and other things such as java moss and salvinia. I started by placing the first crypt towards the back left of the aquarium. Obviously all of the larger plants will be used as background plants and will eventually grow in and help fill the space. However, I did soften the transition by adding a few medium sized plants. I decided to add the other large crypt towards the back right. I then filled in the remainder of the space with the java ferns. These will not only help fill in the space once they grow, but will also create a variation in leaf size and texture. The foreground will be almost exclusively the Anubius nona petites. The reason I say almost exclusively is because I will be adding java moss to this area. As for the Anubiuses though, I wedged them into any little gaps and cracks I could find, as well as super glued some to the wood. As mentioned before, these are epiphytic plants, meaning they don't need substrate to grow. After getting most of the planting finished, I misted down the entire thing so they wouldn't dry up. I then moved on to adding the java moss. 
As with the Anubiuses, I started by wedging these into any little cracks I could find. The idea is that the Java moss will grow, covering a decent portion of the scape. Again, just like the Anubiuses, I had to use a bit of super glue to attach some of the pieces to the rocks, as they wouldn't stay on their own. I then misted everything down again, and started with the riparian plants. Pretty much the only plant I'll be using for this is a rabbit's foot fern. I made sure to add some sphagnum moss around it so it wouldn't dry up. Then to add a little bit of variation as well as some accents, I super glued some air plants to the scape. Bye, have a great time! They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Once the air plants had been added, I could finally move the aquarium to the nano rack and fill it up with water. I tried my best not to disturb the substrate, but inevitably some of it got ruined. The final thing to do was to add the salvinia, thus completing the project. I've experimented with a little bit of aquascaping in the past, but nothing quite like this. Taking my time with this one and choosing the proper materials made this possibly one of the best projects I've ever worked on. Something about the intricate scape growing around the rocks, all the way to the riparian plant growth at the top, makes it look like something straight out of nature. Obviously this is my goal with pretty much all of my projects, but this one definitely takes the cake and represents it the best. I had a really fun time making it minus the 4 hours of scaping, and I'll definitely be doing more in the future. Also, I do have some planned inhabitants for this one, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Take a guess at what inhabitants you think I'll be adding in the comments, as well as tell me what you think about this project. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys this week. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.